to aid people in confronting feelings of insecurity or uh, unworthiness, I often introduce mindfulness and compassion through a meditation technique called RAIN, the RAIN of self-compassion. The acronym RAIN uh, originally was developed by Michelle McDonald, a, one of my early teachers, and has been popularized by Tara Brock. It serves as a, a way to remember and to engage with mindfulness and compassion with what's arising. It, it comprises uh, four essential steps, each one for each of the letters of RAIN. Number one is to recognize what is happening. Number two is to allow the experience to exist without any resistance. Number three is to investigate it with a, a gentleness and curiosity. And number four uh, is to apply a natural awareness, cultivating uh, this awareness through detachment from the experience. In the first step R, we recognize what's going on. We learn to consciously acknowledge the thoughts, feelings, whatever it might be that's impacting us in any given moment. It's similar to waking up from a dream, right? This recognition mar marks the initial escape from the, the trance of unworthiness where we're just not conscious. We find ourselves entangled in these limiting beliefs, emotions, and so on. And signs of this trance may be this, an inner critic. If you see this inner critic, you're likely in the trance of unworthiness. There's feelings of shame and fear, and there's a weight of anxiety and even depression. Now let's move on to uh, the A in RAIN, allowing. That's giving, giving pause as well. Allowing entails permitting our recognized thoughts and emotions, feelings, or sensations to simply exist without resistance. When confronted with an unpleasant experience, an unpleasant thought, our typical reaction falls into one of three categories. Self-judgment, numbing our feelings, or diverting our attention elsewhere. Instead of allowing ourselves to fully experience the discomfort, we often shift blame onto others or we distract ourselves in some way. By pausing with the intention to ease our resistance and allowing the experience to unfold naturally, we carve out some space to go deeper into our, into our true selves. This space uh, fosters a sense of care and enables us to, to make more thoughtful choices. Uh, Viktor Frankl's profound insight, quote, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in this space lies our power and our freedom. This underscores the significance of allowing. For instance, one individual discovered that by allowing herself to feel the tension in her, in her body and the craving for food, she could disrupt her binge eating patterns by remaining present with the discomfort and showing herself kindness, she unearthed underlying feelings of loneliness. Acknowledging these feelings allowed the, the craving to kind of naturally subside on its own. Moving on to the, the third letter, the I, investigating with kindness. Investigation involves tapping into our innate curiosity to delve deeper into our present experience. And this act of exploration helps uncover unconscious beliefs that may be influencing our experiences and reinforcing our identification with a constrained sense of self. A poet Dorothy Hunt's concept of fostering a, a heart space where everything that is, is welcome, underscores the importance of this unconditional care in facilitating a genuine investigation. I personally experienced a transformative power of investigation during a, a long period of, of chronic pain. As I acknowledged and accepted the, the suffering that went along with it, there was, I found self-hatred even. I found by, by investigating it and acknowledging it, I could soften it with compassion. Now let's explore the end, which I'm, I'm calling natural awareness. It's also been called um, 
Michelle McDonald called it non-identification, and I think Tara Brack calls it nurturing. I'll call it um, a natural awareness. Natural awareness emerges when we disentangle from identifying with our uh, limited selves, with our thoughts and emotions. And by loosening this identification, we open ourselves to in intuitively living from the, the inherent love and compassion that's, that's our true nature. When the first three steps of RAIN involve uh, intentional engagement with what's happening, the end, the way I'm using it, represents a, a liberating return to our natural, authentic selves. Here we simply rest in our natural awareness that is always and already there, unburdened by the constraints of limiting emotions, narrative stories, and thoughts. It's important to remember that the RAIN um, practice is not a one-time thing that we do, but rather it's, a, it's really a lifelong uh, journey for many of us. With each practice, we may encounter shifts that, that occur and a growing sense of, of compassion and on openness. The RAIN meditation empowers us to confront our fears, uh, confront our uncertainties with a healing presence, uh, liberating ourselves from old habit patterns and, and restricting self-beliefs. Ultimately, we come to realize our natural presence, our, our ground of our being as the, as the truth of our being, transcending any narrative of, of inadequacy or imperfection that we might, we might have. So I hope you find the RAIN meditation useful and there's lots of information online that you can, can uh, go to to, to uh, go deeper into it. But the, if you're suffering with this kind of mm, self, mm, lack of self-compassion, then I encourage you to, to explore this a little bit. It may, may help you to get in touch with a, a healing presence that is always and already within you.